Hi everyone and welcome to Pelvic Exercises, I'm Michelle Kenway. Today I'm going to teach you how to safely strengthen your abdominal muscles after pelvic floor surgery um, or if you're living with a prolapse or incontinence issues. Now this is probably one of the most common questions that I'm asked by women is what's safe for abdominal exercise and what's not if you're living with pelvic floor dysfunction. Many women need to know that if you place downward pressure, so remember your pelvic floor goes in the pelvis from the front bone here to the back and it's a network of muscles or a hammock. So that if you're doing particular things, particular exercises such as really strong intense core work, a lot of sit up exercise, strong planks, strong hovers, those types of exercise actually increase the pressure down the pelvic floor and actually make the pelvic floor move downwards. Studies have shown clearly that when you do those types of core exercises, for women that have had vaginal deliveries in particular, the pelvic floor is forced downwards. So this is definitely not the type of exercise you want to do if you have a prolapse um, or if, you, if you've got um, if you're following pelvic floor, um, following pelvic floor pelvic floor surgery, particularly if your pelvic floor muscles aren't working well. So pelvic floor muscles need to be very strong to withstand that kind of downward force. So exercises to avoid, sit up exercises, ball crunches, uh, tabletop exercises, any exercise essentially where you've got both legs raised off the ground, that uses my upper abdominal muscles, or my head and shoulders lifting off the ground. Those exercises will all increase the downward pressure and both at once, even worse. So these are the types of things that we want to avoid, particularly if you have pelvic floor dysfunction. So some safe exercises. First of all, we need to think about how to activate the abdominal muscles properly. So what I'll get you to do is lie down, or watch me lying down and then practice this later on. And I'm going to teach you how to gently activate those deep core muscles. These are the muscles that actually wrap around and attach to your spine. They're not your six pack muscles, the upper abdominal muscles. They're the ones that actually help you cough. They're the ones that actually help you to vomit and they increase that pressure downwards. So we're not trying to train these ones. We're trying to train the lower ones and these ones that actually, they are felt lower, they actually wrap right around like a corset onto your spine. So to activate them properly, it's a very, very gentle contraction when lying down. So if you're starting these exercises, when you have uh, approval for your, from your gynecologist to start exercises, particularly following surgery, this is how you'd start them. So lying down your back, I like to keep my heels about fist width apart and my knees fist width apart and my head is obviously down so I'm not using my upper abdominal muscles. You need to have the normal curve in your back, that means your back's not flat and slumped. So you try and keep that inward curve in your back. Now you can use your hands and gently feel just inside those pelvic bones there, these bones here, sometimes you feel those, think that they're your hip bones, they're actually pelvic bones. So you roll over the inside and use your hands there and you can feel that area there and when you activate these muscles properly it's a very very gentle indraw of the area below your knickers towards your spine so you're not going to see a lot when I'm doing this just if you can just imagine that area below where my hands are, are showing you now that area there is drawing inwards very very slightly if I feel this area pulling at the same time I'm pulling in too hard so it's a very very gentle indraw and hold it. And sometimes when you're contracting those muscles, you'll also feel your pelvic floor muscles contracting as well. So let's hold that um, contraction for 10 seconds if you can. So if you're lying down, inward curve in your back, heels in line with your bottom bone, the knees fist width apart, hands over that area, and just feel that area very gently activating, just gently drawing in towards your spine and holding it for one, two, keep breathing, three, four, keep holding those muscles on, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax down slowly. Now, if you're having a lot of trouble with that, an easy way to find them is by lying on your side. And lying on your side helps you to identify those muscles. I find if you put your hand again over that lower abdominal area, let the abdomen bulge, and then very, very gently draw that area in a small amount and again making sure that you're not tensing these upper abdominal muscles too strongly. Uh, well, this, this area here should be pulling in it hard at all. Down here, very gentle contraction and try and draw your lower abdominal wall in towards your spine just a little bit. One, two, keep breathing, three, four and five, six. Can you hold it? Seven, eight, nine, ten and relax down. Not necessarily as easy as it looks, is it? Well, let's make that exercise a little bit more challenging. And these are nice, some nice progressions you'd actually use for that abdominal area and very safe ones as well. All right, so onto your back again, thinking about the exercise that I just showed you, drawing your lower abdominal muscles in. I'm going to 
start with a heel slide exercise. Now this is a nice one to do in bed. If you're lying on your flat bed, not a soft bed, flat bed or on the floor at home, even with a sock on your foot so that it can slide quite readily. It's called heel slide. So drawing your abdominal muscles in the way I just showed you and slow and steady, sliding your heel, one heel at a time, down, down, down. Maintain that inward curve in your back. Now sliding the heel back up, slide, 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 and relax down. Okay, let's try the other side. Slow and steady again, slide that heel down, slide, slide, slide. Keep your tummy muscles on just gently as you go down there. Keep the inward curve in your back, slide the heel back, slide, and relax. And once again, I can feel my muscles working there and working quite hard too to control that area. To progress that exercise, you can take it into a, a, a leg extension with the foot raised off the, off the floor. So you can actually take it into a small lift and extend it again, holding your tummy muscles on just gently. Another nice abdominal muscle exercise, bringing the leg back and take it down. And that's not where you'd go into early days post-operatively. Again, you'd start your heel slides, and you could start your heel slides fairly soon post-op, as soon as you're allowed to, as soon as you're going, as you can. But then the, the lift and raise is a more um, advanced exercise, and you're probably thinking about starting that five to six weeks after your surgery, again, once you've had approval to, to exercise your abdominal muscles. So you've got the advanced leg extension, and you've got the heel slide exercise. Another lovely exercise for lower abdominal control is called bent knee fallouts. Now this exercise involves you, and I'll, I'll do this with my left leg closest to you so you can see what I'm doing. I'm imagining I've got a glass of water balanced on my right knee, and my left leg is going to lower down to the side just gently without my hips rolling. So I'm keeping that glass of water stable on that right knee, not letting it tip over, bringing the leg back up slow and steady, slow and steady, and relaxing. Try not to tip that glass over and not rolling my pelvis. You can see that I could readily roll and move. I'm not doing that. I'm using my lower abdominal muscles to control my spine and control my trunk and stop that rolling movement. Let's go again with the other side. So this time my glass of water is balanced on my left knee. My left knee stays pointing towards the ceiling, slowly lowering my right knee out to the side, slow and steady bringing it back up slow and steady. So I just take it to the point before where I feel my pelvis is about to start to roll. And you can, pick, can repeat that each side. As for all the exercises we've done, you could repeat them up to 10 times, just as you start to feel comfortable with them, working the number that feels comfortable, and that's the way to progress those exercises, bringing back up and relaxing. So, how did you go with all those exercises? We've done a couple of great abdominal strength exercises, abdominal control exercises there. They're for your TAs or your transverse abdominus or deep abdominal control muscles. So we've done our heel slide exercise, we've done our leg lift and extend exercise, and we've also done a very gentle bent knee fallout. Once again, just drawing the abdominal muscles in gently when you're doing those exercises. And try to steer clear of sit-up exercises and intense core exercises that will actually place pressure on your pelvic floor. Well, that's it for me for today. I've enjoyed exercising with you and I hope you've enjoyed our exercise session. I look forward to exercising with you again soon. If you'd like more information on safe exercise with pelvic floor issues, please visit us at pelvicexercises.com.au and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.